everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about containers, and specifically what is a container, and this is in the context of our modern application journey. So along the way we've talked about modern applications, how they're broken into smaller component parts compared to like legacy, more monolithic applications. And we also talked about the pillars that define a modern application, things like scalability and resili resiliency and so on. And so now I want to introduce the concept of a container. So a container, an application container, is a standalone, all-in-one package for a software application. And the container is going to include um, application binaries plus the software dependencies and the hardware, hardware requirements that are needed to run this application. And these are all wrapped up into an independent, self-contained unit. So just a quick picture of what an application container would maybe you know, consist of. So I'm going to put you know, container here container, and this is the application, so I'll just put um, the binaries, right, that are required for this, so that's R-I-E-S, right, and then the software, so I'll just put software uh, dependencies, dependencies, and then the hardware requirements, right, so I'll just put requirements, and these are things like how much CPU does it need, um, how much, you know, network uh, capabilities it need, how much RAM, uh, maybe like disk, size or space, that kind of thing. So those are the those are the hardware requirements. So, you know, if you kind of chunk these together, I'll just put a little box around each of these, and then all of these uh, together would be, or would contain one container. So I'm gonna put just kind of one big box around that. Um, so that would be the contain, or the, the, the contents of the application container. Um, all right, so what you can do with these containers or with this container, is you can drop it into a system and then the container is going to run using the local hardware and the local operating system and since it includes all of the necessary dependencies the container is going to function exactly the same way when it's deployed on a laptop or a server or like a virtual machine or in the cloud or any kind of system that it's dropped onto right um, and then as a self-contained package these containers can be easily moved to a different system or they can even be uploaded or downloaded to like a software hub like GitHub, for example, to be shared with other people. So I'll just, uh, you know, from, from a picture perspective on that, I'll just show you, um, you know, you have this containerized application here and you could upload that to, you know, this, uh, this you know, cloud-based hub. Let's say this is like GitHub, for example. And then from here, um, the, you know, different, different teams or users could download the, uh, the container, so I'm just going to put this right here, right? And so this is very easily uploaded to like a software hub like GitHub and then downloaded, you know, to other teams. So it's very easy to share, um, movable, that kind of thing, portable. All right, so I want to take this and then put it into the context of like a development team, for example, and show some of the power of, of containers. And so let's say you have a, uh, let's look at like the development cycle of an application, for example. So you have like the dev team, I'm just going to put dev right here. The dev team consists of, you know, several hardworking, super smart people, and they work on this, you know, application every single day. They commit changes to the software every single day, let's say. Um, and let's say all of them use uh, laptops. So I'm just going to put a couple of different uh, components here. So let's say they use laptops, and let's say that they have, you know, between 16 and 32 gigs of RAM, on their laptops and they, you know, they're running, you know, a variety of Linux flavors uh, to develop this application. So that's Linux right there. All right. So let's say that that's the dev team. Um, and then whenever they develop this app, this application, the application gets broken into different containers, right? So you have this maybe large application, um, but each container then is going to contain uh, a, one of the services that this application provides. All right. So to say it differently, the application gets broken into different containers and each of those containers is optimized for the service that it provides, right? That that container provides or that service provides, right? Okay, so that's the way that they start to develop this application. So you can start to see the difference between like the monolithic architecture where it's just all one big, you know, one big chunk of an application. And now we're starting in this container environment, we're starting to break it up into its component parts, right? All right, so let's say the development team does their hard work. The application runs beautifully on all the development machines, right? Because they're working on it every day. They optimize this thing. It works beautifully on laptops with this much RAM. 
different flavors of Linux. They all have spinning hard drives, let's say, that kind of thing, all right? Well, then they kick it over to the QA team, right? So you have the, the quality assurance team, and this team does awesome work too, right? Well, they have, you know, a variety of different servers, right, that, uh, that have all kinds of different memory. So I'm just, you know, I'm going to put, you know, RAM is very, you know, it, it runs the gamut, right? Um, they maybe have different, you know, SSD drives uh, in addition to spinning hard drives. So you can see that the hardware here is maybe much different than what the development team has. Um, but because of the container, uh, each container defines right down here the hardware requirements, the resources that are required for each service to run. The, the server can carve out the resources when the service is needed and it provides those services for the container. So then the container, the, the containerized application is going to run exactly the same in this environment on the QA team as it does on the development, uh, you know, hardware and for the development team, which is awesome. All right. So then after QA gets done with their job, then they kick it over to production and it's time to, you know, put this thing into the live production environment. And so let's say in this example, there's a distributed cluster with like, you know, a hundred a hundred nodes in this distributed cluster, and the nodes use a variety of, of uh, different operating systems. Uh, maybe they use CentOS, for example. Um, they have the latest and greatest hardware. There's like, you know, let's say they have 256 gigabits of RAM, right? So the uh, production, you know, they, they always get more than the development team, right? Um, let's say they have, um, you know, SSD drives. Let's say they have, you know, gigabits, uh, gigabit network, you know, bandwidth cards, right? And so, you know, these are the really high-end uh, hardware environment. Well, again, the application is going to run exactly the same uh, because it's going to define the hardware requirements. Now, it's going to, it's probably going to run faster in production than it did on the development or QA systems, um, but it's going to run the exact same, right? All right. And I wanted to mention, too, that an application container is similar to but it's not the same as a virtual machine. So there's some, there may be some confusion around that. A virtual machine is gonna include a complete copy of an operating system, right? Along with any applications and software dependencies running on it. Um, it's gonna require a hypervisor layer uh, to talk to the host server. Um, and a virtual machine can be capable of performing much more complex tasks, uh, potentially, than a container. But it's, it's gonna require a lot more um, you know, a larger package, more overhead, more time, more resources, all of that, right? So a virtual machine definitely has its place. Um, but if you looked at the components of the container, you've got all this in a virtual machine as well, like the application binaries, you've got the software dependencies, you've got the hardware requirements. But in a virtual machine, you would also have, um, you know, an operating system layer, a hypervisor layer, uh, and then all of this would run on the physical hardware um, you know, whether it's a container or a virtual machine. So a virtual machine is just a little, a little, uh, little heavier, a little, uh, you know, more difficult to move around. Containers, it's, it's more lightweight. It's easier to move and copy and share and all that. All right. Uh, the last thing I wanted to mention here with containers is there's an organization called Docker. Docker is one of the most popular container implementation formats in the world today. Uh, and Docker is an open source software platform that's used to create and deploy and manage application containers. So when you see the word container, you see the, you, you see the term container, then you can think Docker. Now there's a, there's a lot more uh, companies than just Docker, but if you hear the term Docker, then you can think, oh, you're talking about containers now, right? So we just wanna make sure we, we start to build in the terminology as we build out this modern application journey, right? So um, anyway, containers are critical to achieving the pillars that we talked about of a modern application and so you'll see these terms, you know, container discussed extensively uh, when we talk about building modern applications. Uh, so, hey, I, I hope you've learned a couple of things about containers here today. So if you like this, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we'll see you guys out there in the community.